Hey everybody and welcome to another Cricut Craft tutorial. Before we get started, be sure to hit that big red subscribe button down below. It's completely free to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon because that will let you know when I post a new video or when I go live. Today's video is something that I've been working on for quite some time and I'm so excited to finally be able to share it with you. Now this is a really fun thing that you guys can do to make Mickey ears. These are shaker Mickey ears, meaning that they are hollow inside and you can put little glitters and confettis inside of them so that they move around. You can use little beads, lots of options, but today we're going to just use some regular old confetti and glitter inside of our ears. They're really, really fun to make. They're pretty easy. doesn't take a whole lot of supplies as well. And I'm going to offer you guys the templates for free to make these ears as well at CorinneBlackstone.com. Completely free. Just go ahead over there and download the shaker ear template. Now we're going to go over a lot in this video, so maybe a little bit long, but I want to make sure that you guys fully understand how to make these really fun shaker ears. They're adorable on, they're super light and comfortable, and that's one thing that for me is really important, especially when going to the parks, that they don't feel like I've got a giant weight on top of my head. So let's get started. These are so fun. I can't wait to see what you guys do with your shaker ears. Whatever we would do, we do it just for we're going to need to upload the template that you downloaded from my website at corinneblackstone.com to your Cricut Design Space. You can do this with your silhouette as well, but we're going to show you how to do this in Design Space. So what you're going to do is click Upload, then Upload Image, and click Browse. You're going to find where you put your design, so where you put that template, and we're going to upload the SVG. So I need to scroll down a bit because mine is way down here. And it should be titled Shaker Ear Template. Now, you'll see here mine. This is my SVG. It shows as a Microsoft Edge HTML document. And yours might do the same, so just be aware. There is an SVG in here, but there's also EPS, DXF, PDF, and a PNG. So there's everything. So go ahead and select that one after you've unzipped your folder. Now, you'll see that we have two sets of templates here plus some words. Those are really important because... Cricut Design Space doesn't always like to size SVGs correctly. What you're going to do now is just click Upload because it's already an SVG. We don't need to clean it up. Select the image and click Insert Images. Once that's inserted, you're going to see that you have kind of a lot of stuff going on here. What you're going to do first is click Ungroup. Then select your one ear template and check the measurements. You'll see that they're not right. This is based on the fact that Cricut Design Space resizes SVGs. So just size them to the correct size. So we're going to go 3.974 inches wide, and the height should automatically match. And we're going to need to do that for both pieces of the ear. They're both going to be 3.974 wide and 3.533 high. Once you've resized them, you can go ahead and, and delete the text. That text is there just so that you know what size they need to be. Now we're going to set up our ears to see how many that we need to cut. So we need to cut one backing piece and one clear front piece of the solid design. So what I'm going to do is duplicate and I make my front piece that I need in my clear. I just make that one white and then I'm going to leave this one black for now. So we need to make four spacers per ear, which means we need to have eight total of this black design. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this one, two, three times, and then I'm just going to select all of them and duplicate them again. That will give us a total of eight of those ears. We also need to have two of these that are going to be the color of the outside of our ear. So we actually need to duplicate that two more times, and I'm going to take these two and slide them off to the side. I'm going to put this guy back with those ones. So what we're going to do is cut the backing piece and these front pieces out of the same color foam. So we're going to use a blue sparkle foam. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and do this. And then don't forget that we also need two of these as well to make your ears. So go ahead and duplicate those. Now we have all the pieces of our ears that we need. 
Now we're going to upload the image that we're going to use for the little printout for the inside of our ears. So what I'm going to do is click upload and then upload image and browse. Now I'm going to do some soul inspired ears. It's one of my favorites. I think it's such a cute movie and I feel like the bow on this we could really do something fun with. So what I'm going to do is grab my image and this is what we're going to use. I'm just going to choose complex. I'm not going to do anything to the image other than just click continue. I want to make sure that I save this image as a print then cut image and click upload. Now this can take a second print then cut makes design space run just a little bit slow. Once you have your image inserted here, just click on it and click insert images. Now this might load really big or really small, who knows? It's a fun game. So what we're gonna do is right click on it and I'm gonna send it to the back. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I need to size these images, these two. This is gonna be one ear and then this one is gonna be another ear. We need to size them to fit the ear. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the little guys first just cause they are gonna be a little bit smaller and I'm just gonna size them down and you can kind of move stuff out of your way and kind of move this around to figure out where and how big we need this to be in order to fit a lot of the image in. And remember, you're gonna have a little bit of like an outline, so you can always use this part that can help you really size it a lot better as well, so you can really see what part of your image you're gonna see in your ear. So I think that looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'm gonna get this lined up. Now this is how I do it, just so that I make sure that I get the image that I want, is I'm gonna actually take and leave the hollow one on top of it. I'm gonna place this one behind it and line it up best I can. You could use a line if you wanted to, but this is just gonna help me make sure I get the exact image that I want. Then what I wanna do is select the outline of the ear and the image and click slice. Now it is being a little bit funky and not letting me select both of them and it does that from time to time. So what I'm gonna do is, there we go, I got it to select both. So then I'm just gonna click slice. Now with this, because it is gonna slice apart the blue part of our ear, we are going to want to just move this off and then all I do is just select these two pieces again and I just weld them back together because I don't feel like duplicating, you can just weld them back together. So this is gonna be one ear and don't worry that it has like a flat bottom, we won't see that part. And then we're gonna do the picture of Joe and the cat as another piece of our ear. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and click send to back and then I'm just gonna use one of the outlines to make sure that I get as much of Joe and the kitty cat in as I can. Now you'll see that we do have a little like lump there and that's okay, we'll just kind of mess around with this. I think that looks pretty good. So again, all I'm gonna do is take the full one, place it over the other one, select that and the image and click slice. Again, don't worry if you have flat pieces, nobody's gonna see them, they'll be behind the edge. So we can delete this background piece, we don't need it. Then we're gonna keep this and then remember, I'm just gonna go ahead and select this and weld it back together. So we have these two pieces that are gonna be done on a print then cut. We have everything else that will be cut on foam and acetate. The white ones are cut on acetate, the blue ones are cut on the regular foam and, or the glitter foam, and then we have the um, black that are cut on regular. Now I seem to have lost one of my little um, outlines, so I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate the outline, making sure I have all of my outlines that I need. This is a lot of pieces, but it's so worth it when it's done. It looks so cool. So what I'm gonna do is show you really quick how you can line these up a little bit better. So all I do is I just sort of align them all myself and I get them pretty close together. And like you can zoom out, it could help to zoom out a little bit. And then I just line them all really pretty close together. And that way you're wasting a little bit less foam that way because they're pretty close together. And like for this one, I will honestly just end up cutting probably two full sheets of six because I use a lot of these ears, I make a lot of shaker ears. So if you wanna cut just two sets of these, that's totally fine. So what I'm gonna do, I'll show you a quick trick. All we're gonna do is select all the black ones. I'm gonna attach them 
And then all I need to do now is just click duplicate and I will have the two sets of black shaker spacers that I need. We're going to do the same thing with the blue ones. We're just going to line them all so that they are all kind of close together. That way, again, it's not wasting as much foam. And I'm just going to go ahead and line those up. And again, you could cut multiples of these if you wanted to as well. It's really up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and select those and click attach. And these acetate ones, I'm going to move these around. I have a 12 by 12 sheet of acetate that I use for this, so it's really easy. But now when we click make it, you'll see that everything's going to be aligned far better than it was before. Now I am using the maker three, so it is going to ask me if I want to cut on matte, which I do. And you'll see now, like these are our acetate ears. We can just move them around as we want to. But then we have our two sets of black foam our glitter foam and then it'll do the print then cut pieces last. So we start with acetate and I'll show you guys how to set your settings. Now I did forget to mention that this can be done on any of the machines with the exception of the uh, Joy. These might be a little too thick but I haven't tried it so if you try it let me know. But what we're going to do is we're going to cut these on a couple of different settings here. So the first thing that I want to do is click browse all materials. The first thing that we're going to cut is the acetate. So I just search for the first couple of letters and I choose acetate. This cuts really, really well and it just cuts with the regular fine point blade. So it's super easy to do. And again, you can do this with any of your machines. So let's go over. I'll show you guys it cutting the acetate out. It's really fun, really easy. We're going to use these clear acetate sheets. I got these from Michaels and I want to say you could probably find them just about anywhere. I'll link some down below, but these are great. They work perfectly with the Cricut. So what I'm gonna do is grab out one of the sheets. I do keep them in the container because you don't wanna scratch them up, especially if you're gonna use these for these shaker ears. You want nice, clear acetate. And I'm gonna use a strong grip mat for this. I have found that this strong grip mat works the best for what we're gonna do. It just holds the acetate and both the um, foam as well, really, really well. Now, I almost forgot, there is a protective coating on this, so you will want to remove that before you cut. Don't forget to remove that. It should only be on one side of your acetate, but just don't forget to remove that. So all I'm gonna do is place this onto my mat and I have my wheels, you can see my little star wheels, are rolled all over to one side. That's just to help protect my acetate. And you just want to make sure this is pressed down really, really well. And I'm using a Nakappa brand Strong Grip Mat. I love these mats. They are fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and load this. It's going to measure my mat, then it's going to check my tool, and then it will cut out my acetate. Once it's done cutting, I don't unload it from my mat just yet. I always check the cut to make sure that it cut through. It cut through beautifully, so we're gonna go ahead and unload, and then I'm gonna gently take this off of my mat. Now I save this extra acetate, and I just put it back into the packaging because you can reuse that for other acetate pieces. So then all I'm gonna do is pop this out and pop this one off. Now these tend to get lost on my table, so I do recommend putting them somewhere that you're not gonna lose them because they blend into the table so well. So I'm gonna take these, put these off to the side, and then I'm gonna show you guys how to set up the cut for your foam. Now that we've cut out the acetate, we need to set this up to cut out our foam. So what we're gonna do is click Browse All Materials. Now I have a custom setting, so I'll show you my material settings for my foam. I have a custom setting called EVA Custom. This works perfectly for this foam. So what I'm gonna do is find EVA Custom. I have it set to 141 pressure and it just cuts with the deep point blade. There is also now an EVA foam option that has been added. Um, so you can use either one, but EVA foam works beautifully. That's the um, type that I recommend to cut on for your foam material. So again, all you have to do is go browse all materials and then you can just search for EVA and choose your EVA foam. And again, it's going to need the deep point blade and I'll show you guys how to install that. These are the foam sheets that we are using to cut with. And these I just got off of Amazon. They're like eight by nines. They are really, really nice. So what I'm gonna do is just press this down. And actually I think it's an eight by 12 now that I'm looking at it. 
So I'm going to go ahead and press this down really, really well. Maybe 9 by 12. And make sure that's well pressed down. Go ahead and load your machine if you want to. But the first thing I'm going to do is change my blade. So the deep point blade works with the Explore Air 2, the Explore, the Maker, the Maker 3. And it's just the black housing. So all you do is open housing B. Take your fine, fine point blade out and replace it with the deep point blade. Close clamp B and then you can go ahead and load. Again, keeping your star wheels to the side, they will dent your foam and you want to make sure that it doesn't do that, especially when you're going to cut out the glitter foam. So we're going to cut all the foam at the same time under the EVA setting. It works great. The glitter foam I tend to cut twice. So we're going to go ahead and cut out all the black and then we'll come back and do the glitter. Now again, I always just double check the cut. Cut beautifully, unload, and then I'm just going to pull this off. And then you can pull all of your little outlines. And again, these are going to be the spacers for the ears. So I'm going to get all these pulled off and then we'll cut the next part of the black and then we'll move on to glitter. Don't worry if you have some of this little adhesive stuff that's poking out. We're going to take all that off, so don't worry if you see some of the white backing didn't cut all the way through. That's okay. Not a big deal. We will just deal with it when we get there, but I wouldn't worry about it because we are going to be taking all of that off. Same with like this middle part. As long as the foam itself cut, don't worry about the backing not cutting through because we only need the middle part and then like these ones obviously are your solid pieces but here we have the outlines and you can see that it didn't really cut all the way through that's okay it's not a big deal because we only need the outline and then these are just like extra random can toss them away pieces so now we're going to go ahead and get ready to print and cut and now it is time to do our print and cut section so what we're going to do is click send to printer and you want to make sure you leave bleed on we're going to cut one copy of this and we want to turn on our system dialog. Turning on the system dialog is going to open up some super helpful printer settings that is going to help us make sure we get the best possible print for our images. Now this does take a second to load, so you'll need to give it a moment while it loads. But once it's loaded, what you're going to do, make sure you have the correct printer selected. I use an Epson ET2720 and I'm going to click Preferences. Now I'm going to change this over here to, and I usually use, i got to find it, Presentation Paper Matte, and then I change this to High. Then go under More Options and turn off High Speed Print. That's all we have to do. Load our printer and print. I'm printing on a 65 pound cardstock from Michaels. Here is our finished print. So I do need to switch out my blade back to my fine point blade. So all I do again is just open clamp B and switch that blade out. Really, really easy to do, but it's an important step. The next thing that we need to do, is we're gonna use a green mat for this and I'm using a less sticky green mat. This is pretty old, it's been well loved. So I'm gonna go ahead and you wanna line up your image as straight as possible onto your mat and press that down. And I just use an inkjet printer for this, so the color comes out really, really nice. And then I set this to the medium cardstock setting. And I see that corner wants to pop up, so I'm just gonna try to press that down really quick. Um, and it's going to scan the lines, then it's going to cut. I do need to turn off this overhead light though, because I do find that with my Maker 3, it's a little more sensitive than my Maker ever was. So I turn that off and then you'll see that a light is gonna turn on in the center here, and that's where the sensors are to read your lines so that it knows where to cut. I'm excited to show you guys this, this is super fun, so let's let it cut this out and then we can start assembling. 
So now that it's done, again, I am going to check the cut like I always do. It cut perfectly, so we'll go ahead and unload. Go ahead and unload this, and then we are going to get ready to assemble our ears. We are ready for the next step. So we have our back pieces, which are these solid glitter pieces, and we are going to stick the cardstock to these, which is why it's kind of helpful that these are sticky backed. So what we're going to do is peel off the backing, which I'm not always fantastic at getting off. So I have some little tweezers here. These are the stab and grabs. A lot of people use them for weeding, but they're great for like peeling backing off of things. So once you can get it started, and these are super sticky, so just be aware of that. And all I'm going to do, and you're going to want to do this very, very carefully. I find it helps to pick the image up and the ear up and line them up in your hand a little bit. But it's just up to you how you want to do this. Um, you just want to make sure you get them as lined up as you can. And again, keep in mind, these are super sticky. So like it's stuck already and it's stuck too far. Oh, that's okay. We can trim. So let's say we do something like that where it's a little bit too high up. All you need to do is just go in and you can just trim off the paper. It's fine. Just be careful not to trim the um, card or the foam, but you can trim off the paper. It's fine. This is not an exact science. I've done this a ton of times and probably I would say eight out of 10 times I miss when I go to stick these down. It's fine. It's not a big deal. You can always make them a little bit smaller too than the ear if you want to. If you're not really good at sticking things down evenly, like someone I know, a yeah, it'd be me. So we'll do this one. We'll try not to drop him like I just did. So if they stick, just rip it off real quick. It probably won't damage it. So again, we're just going to go ahead and stick this one down. I think this one went down way better. Much, much better. I just have a little bit of an edge here, but most of this like really thin edging will be covered up when we go to do the rest of the ears. But we'll just trim it off a little bit. So this is the inside of our ears. And what I love is how easy these are to really assemble. So we're gonna put these ones to the side. Those are the top part of our ears. And then we have these little pieces. These are our spacers. So what I'm gonna do is take some hot milk glue and I'm just gonna run it along the bottom. You don't need a lot. You wanna just use a small amount, just a little. You don't want to go too crazy with it because we don't want bunches of globs of glue. And what you're going to do is align this up with the bottom and the sides because you want a pretty even space here. That looks pretty good. You can slide it around a little bit as you go. So if you need to move it a little bit, you can. And then once that's pretty dry, I like to peel this back and then I go ahead and I run glue all along the edge. Again, I don't put a ton of glue because you don't want it seeping out. And then I just press this down. And before it's fully dry, I will peel this side up. And that way, when I come back around, I can just make sure I get under all the parts. So we're gonna do this for a couple of layers. You're actually gonna do three layers of this. And you can see I got a little bit, so if you get a little bit of a glue glob, like inside or outside, you can simply just wipe it off with your finger or you can use like your stab and grab tweezers and kind of pull it off, whatever you need to do, but you wanna to try to keep the glue from going inside the ears. As I go, I like to clean up any of the little like stray pieces of glue because those will show inside of your ears. So I just like to make sure to clean those up. So what we're gonna do is keep stacking. So you're gonna stack one, two, this is stack number three. And then you can go for it if you want to, it's up to you. You can go up to the fourth one and then this is gonna be our top layer. So you can stack up to four. I wouldn't go probably any thicker than four. Um, that's pretty thick as it is. So again, I'm just gonna go ahead and put glue. So we'll go ahead and get this done and then I'll come back and show you our next step. Now that we have all the spacers in, and one thing you want to make sure is that you have glued really well around all of the edges because we're going to put some glitter in here and then some little like confetti pieces. Now you don't want to put a ton of glitter, you don't want to put a ton of confetti in here because you want to make sure that you can still really see your image, but I like to add just a little dash just for fun. And the glitter usually will just sort of like static itself to the picture and to the um, transparency so like I said don't put a ton in you can see I'm just putting a very like small 
dash in here. I just like to do it just to kind of add a little bit of a sparkle to the inside. And then I cut these out a while ago on party foil and they are just little music notes cut out of party foil. So what I'm gonna do is just put a couple of them into the ears. I don't wanna do a ton of them and I wanna kind of make sure we have a variety of shapes and colors. And like I said, you don't wanna put a lot because they are gonna cover up your image. So it's important to kind of Take your time, figure out how many you want in, what you want in there. So I'm just gonna try to make sure I get like one of each, cause I don't think any more than that. I think this is gonna be too much. So then I just need one of these to go in here. I think that looks pretty good. I don't think I wanna do a whole lot more than that. Honestly, maybe like, maybe like one more of like the small ones, not like the big. Maybe we'll do like one more gold one and one more red one. So this is just a personal preference, you know, whatever you like and whatever you want to do. But for me, I don't like to put a ton of stuff in there because I do really want the image to shine. So now that this stuff's in here, you want to be really careful with them because it'll all fall out if you're not. This is where your transparency or your acetate is going to come into play. So this will melt with the hot melt glue. So beware of that. What I'm gonna do is just a similar idea to what we did with the foam pieces. I'm gonna put a really light amount of glue, pretty flat amount, right here on the base. And then I'm gonna line my transparency up with my ear. You wanna make sure it's well lined up. And then you just wanna give it a light press. Like I said, this will melt, so be aware of that and just be careful with your fingers. Um, be on the lookout for any like little stray pieces of hot melt glue that you want to get out of the inside of your ears. I see a piece that I want to get out and I want to make sure that these are pretty clean before I try to get that out. Um, there is a little chunk of glue that's going to bug me. So I'm going to go ahead and try to pick it out. There we go. Okay. So you want to watch for any like chunks of glue or like spider web glue pieces. And then you're going to glue all the way around the circle just like you did with the foam again being careful not to get it on the inside and like I said the acetate melts so be careful with your fingers you'll want to just gently touch your acetate and it does slide a bit so be aware of that as well so you're just going to want to take your time so I'm going to go ahead and finish putting the acetate on and then we'll put the front frame on So now that we've got the acetate on, it's time to put our frame on. Now, what we're gonna do is peel off the adhesive. So again, I'm not great at this, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my tweezers. And peel off our adhesive. Again, these are super sticky, so you shouldn't need to add any more hot milk glue to this. It should stick just fine. But again, take your time, make sure it's lined up, make sure you're happy with it before it's fully stuck. And we're going to do that to both of these and then I'm going to show you guys how to finish the edge and put these on to your headband. So the last step for the ear part is to finish them off and I'm just using some ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree. Now this is a little bit too wide. You can see it's a little wider than the ear. But we're going to go ahead and glue it on and then trim it down. So what you're going to do is just put a little bit of hot milk glue in my hot milk glue is off so that's not good I'm using a wire or a cordless one so occasionally and I can tell it's getting cool so I need to get a battery for it but what we'll do is you're gonna line up your ribbon just along the edge and you want to try to get it so that it is even with the front edge because we'll trim the back edge off I'm gonna grab a battery and then I'll finish doing the ribbon around the ear Now we need to attach these to our headband. This headband is just from Amazon. So what I do, and like you'll see they're not 100% straight, like you have a, a bump like where the ends don't meet. I lay this down as straight as I can. 
because once you put it on your head, this evens itself out, so I wouldn't worry about it. And you can always kind of like double check it. Sometimes they get a little bit wonky in shipment, but you can kind of like do this to it a little bit and, and even it out. But these, so there, I see a lot of different ways that ears go on. This is incorrect. This is what I like to call the elephant ear, and this is too far apart. This is not cute, it looks weird on your head. They need to be more towards the top of the headband with, I usually say, about two inches in between the ears. So they need to be more towards the top of the headband, just like this. If you are concerned about not getting them straight and even, what you can do is use a little piece of chalk and mark them while it's on your head. You can put your headband on your head and check it that way. But I can pretty much eyeball this, so I just do that. Now with these, you wanna have them centered onto the band. So you want your headband or your ears to sit like in the middle, if that makes sense, so that there's even space on the back and on the front. So what I do is I get them where I want them, hold my headband together, kind of put them where I want them. They're a little close together like that. Move them just a little further apart. I think that looks pretty good. And I don't typically mark my ear locations. I just go for it. So what I'm gonna do is pick it up. I can just generally tell about where my ear needs to go. Flip your ear upside down and put a generous amount of hot melt glue right here at the base. You don't need to go too crazy, but you do want to put a pretty good coating. And then all I'm going to do is lay it down, just sort of make sure I have it where I want it. And I'm going to press it to my headband, making sure that it is pretty even from front to back. And then you want to hold this until your hot milk glue has dried. So you'll need to hold this for a few minutes. Once one of them is nice and secure, you can move on to your second ear. So these are probably going to end up having a little less than two inches. We're probably going to actually go closer to an inch because I'm not going to probably put a bow onto these ears. I don't like to put bows onto my shaker ears because it hides a lot of the detail of your shaker ear. So I'm probably not going to go ahead and put a bow on these. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and put a generous amount of hot milk glue just down on the bottom here. And then again, I'm going to kind of even it out to where I want him. And I'm going to just press him down. Again, trying to make sure that I have an even amount of front to back of the headband. And then I'm going to again hold it and let that glue dry. Once your glue is dry, you can take a look at your ears. I'll let you guys see these up close. I'm going to let them fully dry before I really shake them around. And I'll put them on and let you guys see what they look like. Here are our finished ears. This was such a fun way to make Mickey ears. I hope you guys will give this a shot. Be sure to download the free shaker template at corinneblackstone.com. It is totally free. You can find that template as well as a bunch of other free SVGs and the full Mickey ear templates with the fabric as well. This was so fun. I hope you guys will try to make these and share them with me. I would love to see what kind of ears you make and what your favorite Disney movies are. Be sure to let me know down below if you're going to make these ears. I would love to know. And if you have any questions, let me know down below as well. I hope you guys had so much fun. And one of the things I wanted to be sure to show you was the back of these ears because they're just as beautiful as the front and they're going to look really pretty from both sides. This is a fun thing that you can do for your Disney trip or just for fun. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I hope you have a great day and happy crafting.